In this lesson, we're going to look at parabolas as conic sections. And the definition of a parabola is the set of all points equidistant from a fixed line called the directrix and a fixed point not on the line called the focus. I'm going to show you two ways to generate a parabola using this definition. The first, I'm going to use a program called Geometer Sketchpad. So this is a construction of a parabola. And I have this line here, which is the directrix. This line here, that's a focus. And I've constructed this point here, which is going to be a point on the parabola. And this distance here between the focus and the point on the parabola is going to be the same as the distance from the point on the parabola to a point on the directrix. This point here, this dynamic point, is a point on the directrix. And when it moves along the directrix, you're going to see a parabola form. Now as the point is moving along the directrix, you'll notice that the distances between the point on the parabola and the focus and the point uh, on the directrix and the point on the parabola are uh, equal. See up here in this corner? And so that's how you generate a parabola. Now the second way I'm going to show you is much more low tech. It actually involves a piece of wax or parchment paper and some folding. All right, so now for the super low-tech way of creating a parabola, you need a piece of wax paper, something called patty paper. I'm using parchment paper, and what I have is the directrix drawn on and a point that's not on the directrix called the focus. And the way to generate a parabola or to create a parabola with a piece of paper is to fold that point down to the directrix and make a crease. And what you do is you move the point along different locations on the directrix and you do this systematically. And so after you do this creasing over and over again, you can kind of see the parabola forming. There's the fo focus, there's directrix, and then the parabola is formed along the outer edges of those creases. See, that's where my parabola is. And that, all I did was I folded this point to various points along this line. And if you want to do this on your own, go ask Mr. Word for a piece of patty paper, because he has wax paper, and the creases show up much better, and the parabola will show up much better. So this is the old school way of generating a parabola using a piece of paper and just folding it. Now what I have here is just some parabola that has been drawn in with the focus and its directrix. Now this directrix doesn't have to be a horizontal line. It does if you want your parabola to be a function, but you can very easily make the directrix a vertical line or even slanty. We're only going to look at the parabolas that have either a horizontal or a vertical directrix, not the slanty ones. Now there are a few features that you need to know about the parabola and its various components. First, that the vertex is always midway between the focus and the directrix. And so the vertex of the parabola is this point here at 3, 2. So if I were to draw a line segment going from the focus to the directrix that's perpendicular to the directrix, then the vertex of the parabola is going to be the midpoint of that line segment. Another thing to note is that the line of symmetry for this parabola goes through the focus and the vertex and is perpendicular to the directrix. Now this distance from the vertex to the focus is actually a really important distance. And actually if I know this distance from the vertex to the focus, it's going to tell me a major component to the equation 
of the parabola. And we're going to see what it is later. So right now I want you to note that this distance here from the vertex to the focus is going to be labeled or known as C. So the distance from the vertex to the focus of the parabola is going to be C, and it's going to be super important to the actual equation. So what I want to do now is I want to be able to write an equation given the focus and the directrix by using the definition. We already have a way to write equations for parabolas that are functions, and ultimately what I want to know is how do I write the equations for all the non-function parabolas. And I'm going to use the definition of a parabola. So by definition, the distance between the focus and a point on the parabola and the point on the parabola and the directrix have to be equal to each other. So if I say P is any point on the parabola, F is the focus, and D is any point on the directrix, then I know by definition PD has to equal PF, and then I just can use the distance formula to find and generate the equation for the parabola. Now since we have a horizontal directrix, any point on the directrix in this case is going to have an ordered pair x comma 4. And the point on the parabola is just some general x, y. And the focus is a set point at 3 comma 0. So now let's look and see how to derive the formula for this particular parabola using only the definition of a parabola. And so I end up with x minus x quantity squared plus, and then I use the y values, which is 4 minus y quantity squared, right, because the point on the parabola is xy. And I do the same thing with these two. Um, I get x minus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 0 quantity squared. Now this x minus x is gone, and I don't have to worry about that minus 0 because it's just going to be y squared. And I'm left with an equation with square roots on both sides, and I don't like square roots on both sides, so I have to square both sides, and I get left with 4 minus y squared equals x minus 3 squared plus y squared. And I need to put this in a format that's more familiar to me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this part out and then what happens is the y squareds are going to cancel and I can factor out a negative 8 from this side and get x minus 2 equals x minus 3 quantity squared and so then I get oh sorry this is y minus 2 not x minus 2 and so what I get is y minus 2 equals negative 1 eighth times x minus 3 squared and that is vertex form now, I already knew what the vertex was because of the relationship between the focus and the vertex and the directrix. But what I want to know, really, is where this negative 1 eighth comes from. Because I can find the vertex pretty easily. And I, had to, I used to have to calculate that A value using the third point. But I actually don't have to do that if I know where the focus is and where the vertex is. Because that distance, that C value, the distance between the focus and the vertex, is related to that 1 eighth. Okay? So this parabola has a, a value of negative 1 eighth, and the distance from the vertex to the focus was negative 2. Now, I can't say anything just with one piece of data, so we're going to look at a couple of more parabolas to see if we can just use this C value, which is the distance from the vertex to the focus, to figure out what A is without having to go through all of this work. What I really want is for the parabolas that are not functions, meaning the ones that have a vertical directrix that open to the left or to the right, I want them to have an equation just like the parabolas that are functions. And so I have an example here of a parabola that's going to open sideways. 
and I want to write its equation. Now, before I actually derive the formula using the definition, I am going to plot a couple of points that I know are going to be on the parabola. And as long as I have the focus and the directrix, I can plot some points. Mainly, the first point I can plot is going to be the vertex, because I know the vertex is going to be along this dotted line of symmetry, and it's going to be halfway between the focus and the directrix. So right here, that's going to be my vertex. And I can also very easily find, in this case, my y-intercepts, because I know the distance between the focus and a point on the parabola and the directrix in a point on the parabola has to be equal. Well, I know that the distance between the directrix and the axis is six units, so I know the distance from the focus and the x-intercepts also has to be six units. So I know I'm going to get one y-intercept there at 10 and the other y-intercept down here at negative 2. And so now what I can do is I have three points, and so I can very carefully try to sketch in my parabola given this information. And so now all I have to do is find the equation. And before I do that, I'm going to find the length of the segment from the vertex to the focus in the hopes that when I actually do derive my equation, I can find the connection between the a value of the function and the c value, which is the distance from the vertex to the focus. So in this case, c, the distance from the vertex to the focus, is going to be negative 3. So pd is going to be x minus 6 squared plus y minus y squared equals, and then pf is going to be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 4 squared. And so now I'm going to multiply everything out. So I get the square root of x minus 6 squared, because that cancels, equals the square root of x squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared. And I square both sides, and I get x minus 6 squared equals x squared plus y minus 4 squared. And so then I multiply this out, I get x squared minus 12x plus 36 equals x squared plus y minus 4 squared. The x squareds are gone, and I can factor out a negative 12, and I get um, negative 12 times x minus 3 equals y minus 4 quantity squared. I can divide both sides by negative 12, and I get x minus 3 equals negative 1 twelfth y minus 4 quantity squared. Now, we knew where the vertex was on this parabola before we started. It was at 3, 4. And if I look at this form right here, this is a different version of vertex form for the non-function parabola. And it's just the x and the y's swapped location. So it's exactly the way I wanted it to be. Um, I just have to switch the locations of the x and y's uh, and get the exact same equation for vertex form for a non-function or sideways opening parabola. Now, I also want to look at a, so a in this case is negative 1 12th, and c, the distance from the vertex to the focus in this case was negative 3. So this is another piece of information I need to figure out the relationship between that a value in the function, the only thing I don't know from vertex form, and the distance between the vertex and the focus. So now I want to look at a couple of more examples of parabolas so that I can relate the features of the parabola to the equation. So I give you a parabola with the equation y plus 3 equals 1 half times the quantity of x plus 3 squared. So it's in vertex form. Its vertex is located at negative 3 negative 3. So the c value, which is the distance from the vertex to the focus, I have to go up a half a unit. So the c value here is 1 half. And the a value is also 1 half. So now let's look at this 
The sideways parabola, its equation is x minus 1 equals 1 16th y minus 3. Its vertex is located over here at 1 comma 3, and its focus is over here at 5 comma 3. And the c value for this parabola is equal to 4, and the a value was 1 over 16. So now let's go back and compile all the values of c and all of the values of a we have for our parabolas. And we've looked at 4 so far and see if we can find the relationship between c and that a value. So looking at the four parabolas we've had, uh, we've looked at one of each of the four types. You know, the fu two function types, the happy face and frowny face, and then the two non-function types, one that open to the left and one that open to the right. And so here are their C values and here are their A values, and I need to find the relationship between them. And these three points are the easiest one to use to find the relationship between C and A because the signs are the same. And what it looks like is, is I'm taking one over four times the C value to get the A value. And because two times four is eight and three times four is 12 and four times four is 16. And if I actually think about it, uh, four times a half is two and I end up with a half. So this looks like the relationship between that A value in the function, the thing that we did not know from vertex form and C, which remember is the distance from the vertex to the focus. And that's specifically from vertex to focus because that's how you get those signs correct. Now for these next slides, you're going to have to do a little bit of extra work because I cannot draw very well on PowerPoint. And you just can't have this bit of information. Now this compiles all of the information for one type of parabola that we have. And what you need to do in your notes is that you need to sketch this. You need to sketch some generic parabola that fits this criteria. Label the vertex, label the focus, label the directrix, label the axis of symmetry, write down what C is, make these set of notes super specific and related to an image so that later on when you go back and work on these problems in class, then you have a better reference than just this slide. Now this is the other type of parabola. This is the one that's not a function that either opens left or right. And you can tell that because you have the y value squared instead of the x value. And I want you to do the exact same thing you did with the last set. You need to copy down this information in your notes and you need to draw a picture and label it.